Well, the European Union has a message for Kyiv and for the Kremlin. The EU says its support for Ukraine is, quote, permanent. That's a declaration from the bloc's top diplomat after EU officials met in the Ukrainian capital to discuss the war. In Washington, U.S. President Joe Biden says he fully expects Congress to approve new funding for Ukraine, even though it wasn't included in a last-minute deal to avoid a U.S. government shutdown. CNN's Frederick Clacton is on the ground in eastern Ukraine and joins us now live. Good to have you with us, Fred. So on the battlefield, still essentially a stalemate, a lot of back and forth. Uh, but in terms of the troops you're speaking to, the Ukrainians, what are they telling you will make a difference in their counteroffensive? Well, first of all, Linda, I think that they believe that they are making a difference in the counteroffensive already. They think right now, even though, as you say, it essentially is a stalemate in many places on the battlefield, that right now they are the ones who have the momentum on their side. They're the ones who are pressuring the Russians. We could see some of that here in the east of the country. They say what they need is a steady stream of weapons and especially a steady stream of ammo. And, of course, a lot of them we're quite concerned about some of the things coming out of the U.S. and certainly hope that the U.S. aid does not dry up. And we spoke to some of them and asked them, look, what would happen if there were less aid from the U.S.? Here's what they said. Ukraine's 80th Airborne Assault Brigade storming Russian positions on the Eastern Front using U.S.-made weapons to try and dislodge Vladimir Putin's troops. Gains that would probably be impossible if Washington cut military assistance. Sip. This soldier, whom we can only name as Vasil, tells me. <laughs> I don't know what to say. That would be tough, he says. <laughs> the troops say U.S. supplied weapons like this Browning heavy machine gun are helping them turn the tide because they're more accurate more reliable and more robust than what the Russians have. You can see just how important military aid for Ukraine is for that country to stay in the fight. It's everything from rifles to surface-to-air missile systems to help Ukraine push Russia back. The U.S. has sent more than $45 billion worth of security assistance to Ukraine since Russia's full-on invasion. Weapons viewed as game changers by Kiev, like the HIMARS multiple rocket launching systems and Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, which Kiev says have already saved the lives of many Ukrainian soldiers. Losing U.S. assistance would be catastrophic, Ukraine admits, but the national security advisor tells CNN he doesn't believe it will be cut. We are more than confident that this will not happen, he says, if the United States is a country responsible for the democratic world and has assumed this responsibility. It would be a great joy for Putin and all autocratic regimes if the U.S. withdrew the assistance it provides us. But the Kremlin believes sooner or later Washington will buckle. Fatigue from the absurd sponsorship of the Kiev regime will increase in various countries, including the United States, the spokesman said. And this fatigue will lead to a fragmentation of the political establishment and a rise in infighting. The soldiers from the 80th Airborne say they badly need U.S. weapons to continue pushing the Russians back in the east, but will keep on fighting with or without American support. We don't have a choice, he says. We have to do it. Our brigade's motto is nobody but us. Nobody but us, Vasil says there. And, you know, that's something that we've been hearing from a lot of soldiers on the ground here in eastern Ukraine. They say they're going to keep fighting whether or not they get weapons from the United States. But, of course, the big question is, can they keep winning? And one of the things that we've also seen is that the Ukrainians currently say that they are making more progress both in the south and here in the east. But a lot of that, of course, is thanks to weapons from the U.S. and its allies. So there, Lena, you have that uh, soldier called Vasil saying that uh, the Ukrainians will continue to keep fighting no matter what happens. The big question, of course, is going to be without a steady stream of American weapons, can they continue to keep winning? And of course, Fred, we know the Pentagon has said that uh, there are many months worth of, of funds to spend on weaponry to send Ukraine, even without this latest approval in uh, the U.S. budget. Uh, but we have heard more from the EU today about this proposal for $5 billion in funding. What does that sort of support mean in light of the fact that Russia seems to want to continue fighting month after month? 
I think it means a great deal to the Ukrainians. And I think, you know, things like five billion dollars will, will go away a, a long way for the Ukrainians. I think right now, um, if you speak to units that are on the ground here in the east, but also in the south of the country, a lot of them believe that by and large, they do have a good quantity of weapons to use on the front lines. If you're talking about, for instance, barrel howitzers, barrel artillery, if you're talking, for instance, about main battle tanks as well, the big question for a lot of them is, of course, spare parts to keep them running, but then also ammunition is one of the things that is, I think, often underestimated, but is a huge deal for a lot of the soldiers here on the front lines. A lot of them believe that they don't have enough ammo to really put pressure on the Russians in some places. They say they need more of that ammo and they need it to continue to keep coming. It's one of those things where they say they believe support from the West goes an extremely long way, especially as the Ukrainians are also, Linda, um, transitioning in many cases from Soviet era weapons to Western weapons. And they're going to need a lot more ammo for those Western weapons going forward. All right, Frederick Blyton for us. Good to have you there on the ground for us in eastern Ukraine. Thanks very much.